Alright guys, I'm back. Thanks for staying with me. Thanks for staying tuned. Alright, I have this pulled up on my scan tool. This is a correction. This is a 2017 Dodge Journey with a 2.4 liter dual overhead cam engine. Now, uh, as you can see under my topology, I have fault codes in several different modules. Uh, now, there's no TCM module on this screen because, as you know, some of the newer cars, the PCM took over the TCM duties, okay? Uh, some may call that an NGC, NGC module, Next Generation Controller. Uh, it pulls double duty, so we're going to look inside the PCM. Now, let's go to DTC, see what we got. Okay, air temp sensor circuit high. Uh, somebody might have left that unplugged. Uh, transmission range sensor rationality. All right, ladies. Well, now we're getting somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, another code, park neutral switch performance. Now, we are on to something as far as uh, electronics. Uh, fault codes, okay? These two fault codes here alone uh, could potentially signal uh, the same failed part. Now, that range sensor uh, also acts as a part neutral switch okay and as you can see the range sensor transmission range sensor rationality this is the sensor that delivers the controller the temperature of the fluid okay if it's uh, not doing its job well uh, you will have fault codes like that all right now I click this because I want to see uh, some of the diagnostic we're working with a 41 te let's click here and see uh, let's just take a peek at the diagnostic, okay? P0706 is the fault code, pretty much. Uh, you have the PCM right here, the range sensor right here, okay, the shift level right here, all those uh, inputs. Now, as you can see, the range sensor, that's uh, basically one, two, three, four, five inputs going to the controller, all right? Let's take a look on the you know how y'all like to do possible causes okay you could have a shift lever cable out of adjustment metal debris in the pan that could be a problem uh, circuits open voltage and grounds and things like that and right down here you can see you can simply have a failed transmission range sensor or you can simply have a PCM that's failed but uh, you really should run the test guys I know a lot of guys run straight to this possible causes uh, the test pretty uh, not that it's not that complex it don't look complex at all okay uh, I re highly recommend you run the test but uh, I just wanted to take a peek at the possible causes okay so what I'm gonna end up doing guys y'all know here we press for time and I have seen this code and this problem a gazillion time now that doesn't take away the fact that you shouldn't perform the diagnostic I don't want to leave the wrong impression okay but this particular repair, this particular car will end up getting a, a range sensor, transmission range sensor. All right. So what I'm going to do, go to parts and uh, order one. And uh, by the time I get back, uh, we should be, uh, you know, the valve body has to be removed. All right. Let's take a look. Let's go over to the car. In fact, in fact, let me go to a quick ad break, another ad break. And when I get back, we're going to go over to the car and talk some more. Okay, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Ah, <sighs> the transmission shift and erratic went cold. Now, here's the range sensor I was talking about earlier. Okay, like I say, it uh, likely pulled double duty. Uh, deliver the controller the temperature of the fluid. And uh, also tell the controller what position the gear shift the level is in okay so this is the transmission range sensor now it's semi difficult to replace this as you know it's attached to the valve body which means the valve body has to be removed okay in order to remove the valve body you're gonna have to drop the transmission pan so make sure you have some trans fluid available and we're gonna have to take these linkage off and uh these connectors down here all of this have to come off and the valve body drops uh, out of the pan okay so without further ado I'm gonna run through this real quickly y'all so uh, it's fairly easy uh, but some people want to see it so I run through it real quickly let's get it remove the shifter cable off of the transmission shift lever
Unscrew the bolt holding the shifter level off of the valve body. Remove the shift lever off of the car. Unplug all electrical connectors. Remove the transmission pan. Remove the transmission filter. Take note of the O-ring. Remove all of the bolts securing the valve body to the transmission. Here we go, I have the valve body sitting here on the table. Here's my new transmission rain sensor. So the goal is to get this replaced. We gotta get this off of the valve body. As you can see, it's held on here by T25 torque screw. All right, so we gotta remove that. We're gonna remove this sensor right here first. Let's simply unplug this, but be aware of how the wires are routed, okay? Because it's going in under this, so be mindful of that. And simply lift this up. So just simply unplug it from here. And be mindful of the wiring, how it is routed and how it is going. So simply pick up on the connector, get it out of the way. And you should be able to just simply lift this up after you remove the screw. All right, let's get with it. Now it's time to lift up on the transmission range sensor. The only problem you're going to run into is crossing over this O-ring seal, okay? If you might want to lube it up a little bit so it'll make it easier for the rain sensor to go above it. All right. And there you have it, the old transmission rain sensor. Okay, so like I say, just put a little lube around here. The grease transmission fluid that should make the installation process extremely easy. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. All you have to do is reverse the removal procedure to go back in with it. I just want to touch on a few things real quick. Be mindful of how these accumulators are routed and set. One of them have two springs in it, this one right here, and one of them have one spring in it. Just So just be mindful of how it go back together when you're installing it, all right? I have to wrap this video up. So like I say, just reverse the removal process and you should be home Skype free. Be mindful of uh, replacing the filter and installing ATF plus four. Okay, make sure you go in with the correct fluid. If you have a scan tool that will allow you to do quick learn, go ahead and quick learn it. And last but not least, go and test drive it. Okay, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.